Welcome to Hair of the Werewolf. I'm Chase, and I'm here with my co-host, Lily. Hello. We are a supernatural horror podcast where we tell each other scary stories that are allegedly true, and we often have a few drinks along the way, so we can have a little bit of fun with morbid subject matter. So cheers to all of you who are joining us. What are you drinking tonight, Lily? Uh, so I'm continuing with my rum. <laughs> <laughs> rum part 2,342. Part two <laughs> of this month. <laughs> Part two of today. Of today. <laughs> um, I am also doing some rum with you, but I'm drinking a Sierra Nevada Dankful IPA. Never had it before. I'm enjoying it. It's good. Right. I mean, it's it's good enough for tonight. Oh, that's, that's good. <laughs> now, before we jump into any stories today, I do have something I want to talk about real quick. All right. As our recent listeners know, we are in the process of moving. We're actually moving our stuff into storage and house hunting so we can avoid getting stuck in another year lease or anything annoying like that. Well, a few days ago, I was getting super stir crazy at home, and Lily offered to take me for a little drive in the night just to get some fresh air and calm me down. She knows she knows what's good for me. So it only took a few minutes for me to start to feel less cabin fevery yeah and you know we're just driving around and all of a sudden it's like where should we go and i was like why don't we check out some of the houses we've been looking at on zillow Mm -hmm. but at night it's always good to check it out i think you know to see what the house feels like from the outside what the neighborhood is like at night exactly it's a shockingly good idea because you know we've been in some neighborhoods that actually are really creepy at night but fine Mm -hmm. during the day or they look dangerous at night or they're super at night like if we went there and some kid who has his garage band next door is like blaring at like midnight i'm like okay that tells me something about the neighborhood that may or may not yeah 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 yeah. so anyway we decided we picked one house and it was it was funny because the house the pictures online looked really dreary and dark like someone didn't know anything about photography like it just it looked the house itself didn't look bad it didn't look like a fucking you know well kept in the rooms it was fine But you can tell, like, the pictures are really dark. And I'm like, they do look sad, don't they? So is it, like, is it just a terrible lighting situation inside? Or does it seriously lack feng shui? And we're like, or a really shitty phone, camera phone, or whatever camera. Could be all the above. Yeah. Kind of made the carpets look like they were brown. Well, anyway, we decided to drive by this house. And I got to say, when we drove right up to it, it was super creepy. Looking. I actually felt creepy. I still want to see it, though. I do, too. We have to, well, at the very least, to make it a story. Yeah. So, okay, to be fair, it is an empty house. No one's living there right now. So right. you don't anticipate any lights inside. Some people would set up security lights, but not necessarily. So a dark, empty house is going to have an expected level of hollowness or creepiness. Mm-hmm. That wasn't what was creeping me out. What it had is it had a single porch light on. And it was dim, and it was yellow, like the kind that you have in like a prison cell. <laughs> and furthermore, the porch was like gated in, fenced in, like a, it was like a prison cell because you know most people would have like a security door that's metal. Yeah, they've done metal bars all around their entire porch, so you can sit in your porch and feel safe. I've never been <laughs> fond of that because so... it looks pretty creepy. Yeah, I can see that. I so think you... it's like for security, not so much to sit out there because obviously you're going to feel like you're in a cell. Like, obviously. I agree. But I think when I looked at it, you see this dim little yellow light, this tiny little prison in the front of the house, <laughs> and everything else is pitch black, and I'm just sitting there. And the neighborhood seemed quiet, which was good. Well, anyway, I'm sitting there just focusing on this dim yellow light, and then Lily goes, did you see that? And I'm like... <laughs> What? My first thought is she's she's messing with me. Yeah. But she's like, here, here, we got to get a better look. And she like drives up the street. We never left our car, by the way. And then she turns around and she comes down the opposite direction so that, because I'm in the passenger seat, so I can get a better view. And she's like, that window there. And I look at it. It's a window. You can see the curtain. She's like, I think I saw the curtains move. And I'm just like, huh, focusing on it like, oh, my God, oh, my God, But oh my God. I also, so the, the curtains were white. So obviously, they're they're going to have like this kind of weird visual effect. I know you all know what I'm talking yeah. about. When you stare you at something. Because the reflection of the window and the curtain, it's right. weird optics. But when you look at something long enough in the dark, it does start to move. Absolutely. That just happens. That's, that's not a paranormal thing like it just happens all the time 100%. but i'm like i swear i thought i saw it move so when you were looking at it you're like i can't really see it it's still really far away by the way we're both fucking blind oh yeah i was driving at night don't worry <laughs> I about you say drunk i was like we, we hadn't drank no, no. anything the whole day <laughs> no we were sober actually and anyways we do so not i'm like drive drunk. <laughs> 
and don't condone it. Anyway, so we drive the car back, or I do. I, I pull back just so I can go into the driveway this time so our headlights are facing the window and we can finally see get a better view and even though we do it we still aren't sure if it's moving and that's when i kind of freak out and i'm just sitting there my eyes are darting with every single window yeah where there's this part of me that is so scared to see something but then this other part of me that really 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 wants to see something yeah I'm not sure if it's because it meant there was one less house I had to go look at or just because I wanted to see something creepy. But I was like darting back and forth and we just sat there. And then at some point, Lily's like, yeah, there's nothing. (laughs) I'm just like, I'm sure it's fine. And at the very least, when we go look at it, we'll know for sure if it's haunted, maybe. Or we'll just see what the vibe is. Okay. And it's not just because we were looking at night, because we went and looked at another house that night, and it wasn't creepy at all, and it was in a really cool-feeling neighborhood. Yeah. Only problem was it was right next to the highway, and we turned off the car, and all you could hear is the highway. And you and can like, hear it, so we're like, eh, I guess it's not far away enough. But anyway, that's a different but story. But the house was 0% creepy, so it's right. not because we're just, ooh, at night. It The house has something about it. <laughs> And for some reason, I have a feeling we'll go in there, we'll find out they have like a creepy little dungeon cellar, and I'm like, yeah, I'm not I mean, not they weren't themselves. included in the pictures, but Why we'll Why would see. you? Why would you? <laughs> All right, anyway, so I just thought that was worth saying because it's always fun when something creepy happens in real life. But that said, I think we should jump into the story. Okay. So what do you got for me today? Today, I have a hotel. It is called the Fister Hotel. P-F-I-S-T-E-R? Yes. Mm-hmm. Have you heard of it? Well, that's... It's not a very common, like, spelling, so... <laughs> no, for, for a name, that's the common spelling. Oh, I've literally never heard of the name before. Although I have heard of the hotel because of our friend Alex. She had brought it up a while ago. I didn't know if you remembered that part. I don't, but I think they make, like, bathroom fixtures? <laughs> what? I think there's, like, Fister brand urinals? Oh, you mean, like, another company? Or something? Oh, it, like, yeah, it would be, it would be, yeah, with the exact same oh, spelling. I'm um, sure. It's, I'm sure. I don't know. They make faucets. There we go. Oh, my God, they do. There we go, Fister faucets. Well, eh. that's kind of a tongue twister. Fister faucets. Fister faucets. Anyway, <laughs> so tell me about the Fister Hotel. Okay, this is a hotel. I'm sure they have faucets, but not, oh, <laughs> maybe it is by Fister. I don't know. Mm. I don't know, man. It's like their showcase for all their faucets. <laughs> Like, when you check, goes, how was your stay? It was great. How were the faucets? <laughs> Super good, my good sir. Super nice. Uh, yes. So, this hotel is actually located in downtown Milwaukee in Wisconsin. Represent. Yeah. <laughs> You're not from there. I know. But it's one of my favorite <laughs> cities on earth, so. Milwaukee is really cool. I do like it a lot. Uh, anyway, so, it is a very fancy hotel, which is why a lot of famous people find themselves staying there but people who have stayed there would also say don't let the swanky building fool you because it is very much haunted Mm -hmm. yes the story begins with guido fister who migrated it's a name you don't hear very often these days (laughs) oh man i swore i wasn't gonna laugh um (laughs) (laughs) who migrated from germany to the u.s in 1845 he started a tanning business when he moved to milwaukee and a family he adopted a son. I, can I assume <laughs> you mean like tanning hides? Of no, like not animals? like. Not <laughs> was like, like. Wasn't this a bit early for the Jersey Shore tanning? Not Jersey Shore tanning. <laughs> the leather jacket tanning they're good, wearing. Good. Because I was like, wouldn't it be great in 1860 if you got like two number twos on the front and became a four? And became a four? <laughs> yeah. Right. I've seen it happen, man. <laughs> So, yes, um, I meant leather. Anyway, he adopted a son, and his name is Charles Fister, who would eventually grow up and become a businessman just like his father. Together, they uh, managed to grow their tanning business and invest in many other business ventures that would eventually make them very wealthy. When Fister Sr. passed away in 1889, Charles decided to honor his father's dream of opening up a hotel. He would go on to purchase stock in Milwaukee Hotel Company until he became majority owner and invested just over a million dollars to open the Fister Hotel in 1893. That was super awesome of him. I mean, like, realizing the dream. But I got to admit, maybe it's just retiring to every century. I don't see too many people saying, my dream in life is to open a hotel. (laughs) I think he had, like, a real vision of what he wanted it to look like. 
And you'll see why when I describe the place. Um, And by the way, I don't know if you heard me say, but a million dollars back in 1980. Or sorry, sorry, sorry. 1893. Have I been saying 19? No, I think I was hearing 18. Okay, good. Because you already established it was the 19th century. Yes. So. Okay. Uh, So, yes, 19. Fuck. So. (laughs) 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 Ah, Fuck. Fuck. Uh, 1893, one million dollars today would be the equivalent of thirty million dollars, three hundred ninety-six thousand three hundred thirty-three. That's insane. Yeah, that's and I like, just realized I said that wrong. Cause anyway, um, no, but that's like uh, why can't I, I was trying to remember his name. That's why I was pausing for a second. The guy from Titanic who bought Rose the diamond. That's like his money. Like that's how rich he that's, was. But yeah, so he had a get the majority stock and then he invested whatever money he had yeah i don't know i guess he must have been a it's a ridiculous amount millionaire, of money obviously for sure he's he's super rich how many people do you think even knew what a million meant back then what do you mean like the the amount that was a million i mean i'm sure yes people like i think they who studied math and everything but if you if you ran up to the average like 25 something year old and you said What's a million dollars? They'd probably be like, wait, that sounds like a lot of money. I think it's the same when people hear a billion nowadays. Exactly. I it's think, really I think hard it's like the same thing. For people to understand like how much money that it's is. It's a lot of money. Yeah. Anyway, a million dollars it cost him. The hotel itself has 21 floors, but originally it had only eight. When it was renovated in 1962, that's when they added the 13th floor or 13 floors. That's a huge renovation. You're like so over the doubling kind of the like, size of the hotel. Yes. Yeah, so the hotel itself is kind of a regular rectangular kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And then the renovation is this cylinder part that kind of shoots up in the air. I don't know. It's really weird. You should have printed me a visual aid. You know, I don't like to waste ink. <laughs> <laughs> that costs it. money. I know. And imagination so is free. Imagination. Imagine <laughs> a cylinder. <laughs> and yes, 13 floors. Uh, the first two floors, which made up the lobby, is extravagant looking. From the elaborate carpets to the painted ceilings, like it's a damn Sistine Chapel, it looks really amazing, and it really does look like a palace, actually. When you look, It's so insane. I'm all about seeing that stuff. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. When the Fister Hotel opened, it did not do so well that first year. It wasn't until 19... It wasn't until... <laughs> It wasn't until 1894 that the Republican Party held a convention there. Everyone saw how beautiful the hotel was, and since then, politicians, royalty, celebrities, and professional athletes have stayed there. Um, It's been their go-to hotel whenever they're in Milwaukee. So this is prestigious. Very prestigious. You will especially find professional baseball teams staying there quite often. I mention this specifically because, as I found out, the hotel either really loves or really hates them because they tend to be the most targeted group when it comes to these hauntings. Really? I have like, no idea why. Like baseball players. Baseball players. MLB, Major League Baseball. That's awesome. Really weird. Yeah, uh, there have been many deaths in the hotel, but they don't like talking about it. Even the staff refuses to talk about the hauntings when you ask them. They have been quoted saying multiple times, okay, I thought this was funny, They've been quoted multiple times that they do not want to be interviewed or quoted. (laughs) (laughs) Can I quote you on that? Can I quote you on that one? Uh, Despite their efforts, though, like any secret, it will eventually come out, especially when there's so many people involved. Staff, you know, people staying there, obviously. But of course. Many guests have claimed to have seen the ghost of Charles Pfister uh, roaming the hotel. Then when they go back to the lobby, they'll notice his portrait which they would then ask the reception, uh, who is that guy? I saw him walking around the hotel. And then they're like, uh, <laughs> he's been dead for a long time. So other th- I don't know. I'm a little... Fu- I think mostly they see it. And they're like, he, doesn't he look like that painting? Like, you know that painting is ancient, <laughs> dude. No one sees like an it's 1800s like an oil portrait painting. and they're just like, was that from yesterday? <laughs> in his it's damn like, 1800s clothes. It's like a Polaroid in oil. <laughs> Jesus. So vintage. <laughs> Uh, yes. Other things that people have seen in this hotel is strange lights, shadows, their electronics will malfunction, hearing chains dragging, laughter, knocking and banging sounds coming from the walls, boots stomping in the rooms, hearing animal scratchings, 
Uh, There have also been a shadowy figure spotted in many rooms lurking at the end of the bed. It has been described as behaving many in many different ways. It will either just stand there. You can feel it staring at you. Sometimes it would look like it's crouching or cowering. In some extreme cases, it will even reach out and grab you before it disappears. Mm. Mm. Nope. I've, I've, I've been in a hotel. We talked about it in a previous episode where I felt like I was being watched, but I've never felt like I've been grabbed in bed, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> Unless it's me. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly it's you being like, stop stealing the blankets. <laughs> it's me huh. pushing you. Move. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's actually right. Okay, let's go on to the athletes. As I briefly mentioned earlier, athletes are often affected, in this case, baseball players, and they seem to have the most stories that I was able to find online. Uh, There is no specific team that gets attacked more than others, although I did notice that the players that are on the Milwaukee Brewers are not disturbed. Well, why would they even stay there, though? Because that's their hometown. I don't know. Oh my god! I didn't even think of that. <laughs> I would anticipate they would no, stay no, no, at the no. hotel. Okay, hold on. Sparingly. So it is their hometown, but do they actually live? Do they have to live there, like in the city or whatever? I think they just have to be within commuting distance of the field in which they practice. That's all I know. Yeah, I figured that, but at the same time, maybe they're like, "We all want you together for a game to make sure you all come." Oh, that makes sense. Like, keep I, them, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't really know that. That's like the behind the scenes pro sports stuff that I, I don't really hear about. I genuinely never thought of it before, so I have no idea. Like, just Our, not not to control them, but to be like, if we're all here, just to ensure that no one is absent or has an accident along the way or whatever. Like, they if, have to. If anyone we knew had the answer to this, though, it would be our boy Jacob. Because he's, <laughs> oh, yeah, he's obsessed he's, with He's baseball. got the down with baseball. I think we have we more than enough friends who know the answer. Um, but I never even thought to ask. I have no <laughs> idea. Not not my thing. Um, anyway, so. So there isn't another team that is like, they're not like, oh, we hate insert. Like, it's not like the Cubs or the. No, not like any rivals or anything like that, if that's what you mean. It just seems like everyone has a fair shake at experiencing something very very uh paranormal so would uh are you uh, you might answer later and if so just say you're going to talk about it later mm-hmm. but have most of the hauntings been more recent like since the renovation or do these hauntings go back to the 1800s so i wasn't able to find a whole lot about that it didn't seem because like, I mean, all the baseball ones have to be like 20th century because oh. most of the baseball teams are formed in the 20th century or very late in the 19th yeah, it is. And so that's kind of what I was going to talk about next. Not the fact that whether or not it was haunted before. Sure. But also, I think it might have had to do with some of reno- the renovations that had occurred in 1967, I it's, think I said. It's yeah. kind of like when we did the Andalus, we found that it was after at least the first, if not the second renovation. That's when all the haunted stuff started happening. Yeah, like they don't like that. Very interesting. Yeah, very interesting. So in an article, uh, I read that haunted history tour guide, Allison... Jorlin was asked why the ghost seemed to be more interested in disturbing baseball players, and she said it's because Charles Fister is obviously a Brewers fan. <laughs> I, I get, like, she's trying to make a joke, but if anyone is curious, um, Charles Fister died in 1927, just over 40 years before the Brewers became a team. Right, right. <laughs> They're they're one of the they're one of the youngins. They're yeah, exactly. So I'm guessing he must have become a fan after the fact as a ghost. Yeah, he's probably watching all the games as a ghost, eating his ghost food. Yeah, (laughs) as you do. And yeah, so that's kind of the only thing they can come up with on that reasoning. So let me go into specific stories. Please. I love them. A lot of them are going to be quotes, so watch out. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to have to be reading directly from the script, which is apparently not my strong point. As long as they're not from, uh, what was the Travelocity or... No, it wasn't Travelocity, it was... Oh, uh... TripAdvisor? TripAdvisor? Yeah, sometimes I get things from there. Because <laughs> when I hear those quotes, I'm like, these guys don't even know how to type. It's awful. But I have to quote them. <laughs> I must be accurate. <laughs> oh my god, it's bad. Okay, so the first one I'm going to talk about is Bryce Harper. He stayed there in 2012, but I didn't write down what team he was on. Okay. I'm assuming it was not the Brewers, again. Uh, so he and his teammates stayed there, and he said, quote... One time last summer, before I went to sleep, 
I laid a pair of jeans and a shirt on the table at the foot of the bed. I think he meant the bench because he says... Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, those things in hotels that you sit on to put on your shoes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. When I woke up in the morning, I swear on everything, the clothes were on the floor and the table was on the opposite side of the room against the wall. I was so flustered. I honestly thought there might be something in the room. I had no idea what the hell had just happened, so I actually looked around, and then I checked to see if the door was still latched, and it was. Oh, okay, because I'm glad you checked for the latching. So exactly. I was, like, I was like, if you're with all your teammates, they're going to be playing pranks on you. But the <laughs> latching, that makes it weird, unless one of the teammates was hiding in the closet. All and night? the long prank, man. <laughs> that's a hardcore prank. I guess so. So those benches at the front of the bed, I don't yeah. really like them, but isn't that where Michael Scott had to sleep? <laughs> Yeah, he fit right in. <laughs> okay, I was just curious. I wanted to make sure we're talking about the same thing. But yeah, uh, that's exactly what it was. <laughs> <laughs> My parents have one. <laughs> now I wonder. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> you sleep on the bench tonight, eh? <laughs> um, so uh, Bryce Harper goes on to say that he thought, again, maybe one of his teammates were playing a joke on him. But when he asked his teammates, everyone denied it. He doesn't think they would have been lying, especially since the thing was latched and there wasn't really a way for them to prank him. Either way, he ended up switching rooms immediately. He told the front desk, quote, I don't want to talk about it. I just need to get out, end quote. The hotel had no issues with his request and he got a different room on a different floor. So that was fine. Okay, so just real quick question. Okay. If you have a haunting in a hotel, like the kind that really upsets you where you're like, I can't be in this room anymore. Do you think moving to another room would be enough for you to be comfortable? Or do you feel like, I need to leave this hotel? For me? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think I think if I talked to the staff and I said, is my room more or less the haunted room, or the haunted floor? Like, what's going on here? Do you, have you heard any stories specifically in the area that I'm in? If they're like, no, the whole place is haunted, then I'm like, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. Or I'm going to say because I want to figure out what's going on here. You might be wanting to leave, but I feel like I'd I want to say. I think if I have a really bad experience, I'm like, let's let's go. I mean, his clothes were just thrown about. It's just so rude. It is rude. But, I mean, it's not physical. He didn't feel anything else. It was just kind of a prank from a ghost. All right. So, room <laughs> relocation, good enough for him. Good enough for him. Uh, the next guy is Brandon Phillips. He played for the Reds. He said, quote, we play Milwaukee a lot. But I remember one time I came into the room and just sat on the bed. Then, for some reason, the damn radio turned on. So I turned it off and got in the shower. (laughs) When I was done, that motherfucker had turned it back on, end quote. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That's funny. (laughs) Gotta put those ghosts in their place, yo. Yeah. Motherfucker. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Casper's a dick. (laughs) The next guy is Deanna Carlo Stanton from the Marlins. He said, man, I hate when we have to have four games there. Two, three, anything better than four. It's freaky as shit. With the headshot painting on the walls and the old curtains everywhere, it reminds me of the Disneyland haunted house. The less time I'm there, the better. (laughs) So I'm guessing what he's referring to is that when you stay at the hotel for a few days, he's okay, but more than... Once you get to four, he can't handle that anymore. Like, it's too much. Like, the stress just keeps building. It's such a stress. It's, he's it's also a feeling making, a vibe, and every just does not like it. He's also describing it as sounds kind of antiquated. For some reason, that makes me more interested in staying there. Yeah. I uh, like I like. I would love old, to stay there. old-timey hotel, huh? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The next story is by Michael Young. He plays for the Phillies. He said, oh, fuck that place. <laughs> Oh, I love these quotes. Uh, Listen, I'm not someone who spreads ghost stories. So if I'm telling you this, it happened. A couple of years ago, I was lying in bed after a night game and I was out. My room was locked, but I heard these footsteps inside my room stomping around. I had heard all these stories about this hotel. So I was wide awake at this point and then I heard it again, these footsteps on the floor. So I yelled out, hey, make yourself at home, hang out, have a seat. But do Uh-oh. not, yeah. But do not wake me up, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna reason with it. Uh, after that, I didn't hear a thing for the rest of the night. 
I just let him know he was welcome, that we could be pals, that he could marinate in in there for as long as he needed to, just as long he didn't wake me up. That was his experience. <laughs> Damn, usually when you like invite a ghost in these stories, shit gets bad. Yeah. So, so I'm happy that things didn't get bad. It's kind of funny. It's like, yo, you can haunt this place. You can do whatever jiggery poker you need to. <laughs> just do not wake me up. <laughs> I would just be like, you need to leave me alone. Whatever that means to you, do it. Yeah, so I, I would not welcome anything. Uh, yeah, so that was his story. The next guy is uh, Justin Upton. He played for the Braves. He said, quote, For the minute I was in, I walked in there, I freaked out. The whole place, the creepy lights on the side, everything. I have to sleep with the blinds open and the lights on. Next time I'm finding another hotel and paying for it on my own, I can't <laughs> sleep there. Like, he straight up can't Damn. even like handle the pressure of maybe experiencing At that it. point, it's not you telling a story. If you're like, I'm willing to spend the money to stay somewhere else. <laughs> You're saying something big there. Yeah, I agree. Uh, The next guy is Pablo Sandoval. He played for the Giants. He said, I don't like the ghosts there. In 2009, I went to take a shower, and I remember putting on my iPod next to a speaker. When I came out, it was playing music. I have no idea why. I left the hotel after that. I didn't want to stay there. Me and Edgar Renteria... Renteria? I don't even know if it's Spanish. Anyway, stayed down the street and paid for it on our own. Then last month, I decided to stay there again at the Fister he's referring to. I asked myself, why do I have to be afraid? The only thing I asked the ghost was to let me sleep, and they did. So the last time he stayed there, he was finally like, let me sleep, and apparently the ghosts are okay when you tell them what to do. That's weird. (laughs) Submissive ghosts. Submissive ghosts. Maybe it's just like a... (laughs) A vibe thing you put out. I have no idea. Because maybe they feel like, oh, I can't scare him or... I don't know. Uh, so that was his story. The next one is C.J. Wilson. He played for the Angels. He said, quote, this one's a long one, so watch out. I had lots of experiences there. I was on the computer one night doing my typical shtick, and then all of a sudden, the light started flickering. I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to be so pissed if my computer dies. <laughs> then, <laughs> then the lights just shut off, and then the TV shuts off, and then the lights turn back on, but the lights at the front door turn off. I just yelled out, really? I have this thing with ghosts. I just engage them or confront them. Just say, hey, man, I'm here to chill out. I'm just here to send some emails. No big deal. Just leave me alone. So after that, I went back to whatever I was doing on the computer. But then 30 minutes later, they're scratching on the walls. Now I'm thinking, okay, it's the Midwest. There could be a a possum or something in the wall, right? (laughs) That's possible, isn't it? (laughs) I don't know. <laughs> I like because that's exactly that my so first funny. reaction when you're scratching was like, oh, there's like rodents. But not why, <laughs> why a possum? Now that I don't know. Yeah, to me it's always rats. It's it should be a m- mice. Yeah, or mice something. or rats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, he says all I knew was that there were definitely noises coming from the wall. I just said out loud again, "Can you please just leave me alone? I'm really trying to work here." At this point, I'm on edge. I'm literally looking to see if there are people in the hallway. If someone's trying to pull something, uh, we'll all do that sometimes. We'll take a guy's key card and hide it in the closet or behind the shower and jump out. Okay, so here we are. (laughs) They actually do play these kind of elaborate pranks on each other. But I think the idea is that you usually find them. Sure, sure. So I think that's what he's referring to. And then he says, but then the lights really start going crazy. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I don't want anything from you. Leave me alone or write it down. Write down what you want. I can't communicate with you with lights. The next day, we all show up at the park and everyone has this very uneasy feeling. Like we all had bad Chinese food or something. (laughs) (laughs) Did you get some ghost indigestion? Yeah. What's up? (laughs) I have ghost heartburn. It really sucks. Uh, He says, I said to one of my teammates, you wouldn't believe the shit that was going on in my hotel room last night. And another guy said, oh, my God, are you talking about that shit you heard? Everybody had a story. (laughs) One dude got locked in his bathroom and he got to uh, and he had to get the hotel to get him out. (laughs) Another guy had the lights turned off when he was in the shower. Another guy saw something very vague there. (laughs) (laughs) Right. (laughs) What'd you see? Something. All right. Whoa. Uh, Homie saw something. Uh, and then he says, I don't get terribly concerned unless things start uh, chattering in the room. So it was fine. I don't get that much sleep anyway. But you just get a vibe when you walk in. It's almost like... <laughs> I forgot he said this. 
It's almost like you're in Prague <laughs> or something. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, oh my God. He says, very gothic. Oh, okay. I think he means like yeah. this style. Uh, he says, being on the road so much, we're used to a standard cookie cutter place, but this hotel totally stands out. So I think, yeah. <laughs> Just, his description was really funny. Why am I getting this vibe? that the brewers have some sort of like deal with the hotel where they've got weird stuff happens like we're gonna win the game if you just rattle the players they're like we're gonna have such major discounts for them and all that stuff. it's like the ultimate scandal to win however if it worked they'd win a lot more games than they do what do you mean well oh oh, you mean the brewers would win yeah Yeah. no i cool team great good for them and everything but yeah They're not winning a whole lot of World Series is all I got to say. Right. So I guess it's not really working, but maybe it just keeps them in check for a little bit, (laughs) for a little while. So let's see. The next story is by Carlos Gomez. He was playing for the Twins back in 2008 when he stayed at the hotel. One night while he was taking a shower, he heard voices in his room. He saw something walk by when he got out of the shower. I think I paraphrase this one because the... (laughs) The quote was too crazy for me. Anyway, so he says uh, he went to go check to see who was in his room because he just saw someone, but no one else was there. Later, while he was getting ready, he heard his iPod begin to vibrate and start playing random songs. Mm. It was vibrating so much that it fell off the table. He went to go pick it up and put it on the table again, but bam, it happened. Just kept going. It just kept going. Uh, He then immediately raced out of his room before putting on his pants and went to the lobby to change rooms. (laughs) I'd like to say that most people would be like, man, my phone is glitching out. He's like, ghost. I got to get out of here. But I think it's like that, hearing voices, (laughs) seeing someone pass by. The next time my phone starts vibrating in my pocket, you're like, what's up? And I was like, ghost. And you're like, or someone's calling you. (laughs) But be sure to take off your pants first before you run away. Right. Um... Yeah, so he said, uh, actually, I did get a quote from him, a part of it. He said, I'm scared to go there. They should change the hotel. Everybody here doesn't like the hotel. Why do they always put us in the same hotel when you can't sleep? Everything's scary. Everything in the hotel, the paintings and the pictures. It's a lot of old, crazy stuff. No good, man. No good. (laughs) So, So I think even he was on board with you. Like, why are we here? Like, no one likes it. Yeah, pretty sad. The next story is by... Is from Adrian Beltre, I think is how you say it. He plays for the Dodgers. Um, one of the experiences he had, he said, was that he heard knocking sounds from the door. His TV and air conditioning would repeatedly turn on and off while he was sleeping. He heard what sounded like slapping against his headboard with an open hand. Okay, that's a that's a loud and distinct sound. It's a very distinct sound. I think we all know what that sounds like. Oh, yeah. yeah, which is really creepy. We don't even have a headboard, and I know exactly what that sounds like. <laughs> no, we do not. Um, the other guy here that I have is G-Man Choi. I forgot who he played with for, shoot. I think it was... I don't even want to say, just in case I offend anyone. Yeah, you don't want to. Anyway, uh, he said when he first stayed at, at the Fister Hotel, he was a rookie from South Korea, and he had no idea about the hotel's ghostly reputation. On that first night, he felt a ghost get into his bed and kind of disappear. So oh, he, okay. He, I thought we were going a little bit more no. like cringy than this. I was like, wait, dun, wait, wait. Dun, what dun, happened dun, while dun. the ghost was in bed with you? He's like, oh, that disappeared. I'm like, oh, okay. No, that was it. But then he said on another stay, he felt the ghost, another ghost, get into his bed again. But this time it hugged him and murmured in his ear. <laughs> what what sweet nothings did it say? <laughs> murmur, murmur, murmur. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. When the interviewer asked him what he thought about him staying there another two nights, so while he was being interviewed this last time, he was already staying there, and Choi responded, I hope it's a girl. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> but then he says, just kidding. You know, I've dealt with it so many times, I don't even care anymore. I'm like, could you imagine having these many experiences at a hotel and you're like, fuck it. Just, just put He's me out of He's got a ghost stalker. <laughs> he has a really, really All the other ones are like getting like harassed and crazy noise. This one's like, ooh, <laughs> cutie pie. And just like snuggles up. Someone has a crush. Yeah, really weird. This one comes from the club manager for the Brewers, uh, Phil Rosawicks. 
Uh, he recalls a story. Oh, so the Brewers. Here we are. I forgot about that. So he. Okay, so we do have a legit Brewers. This is. See, this is exactly what happens when I do my notes many days in, in advance and then, like, get back to it. I don't remember what I wrote a few days ago. So it's all over the place. Sure, sure. Yeah. Sorry about that. So we do have a Brewers experience here. Uh, what he says is that the opposing player, while they were staying at the hotel, he was a rookie. He had a bad night at the hotel. He said, quote, there was a rookie player, uh, ball player, and he was back in his room when he woke up in the middle of the night and his blinds were open. The window was opened and he just panicked. So he went into the bathroom, splashed water on his face, came back out and went to bed, shut the blinds and window again, woke up in the morning, same thing, slept on the couch in the lobby the next night. Ooh. Yeah. He refused to go back to his room. Finally, he eventually went to the Motel 6 or whatever was up the street, he says. Yeah. Like... That one was an That's extreme. Rough. That one's that would rough. That mess me up too. Yeah. If, if I closed it and it opened and I closed it again and open, I'm like, yeah, I'm out. Well, exactly. Like, how do you deal with that? That one doesn't legit. I mean, they. I feel like they're all pretty legit. I don't think they would make this stuff up, but at the same time, I think the, I think the vibrating electronic device <laughs> on the ground doesn't do anything for me. I'm sorry. But he also heard voices in his room, like I said, and all that other stuff. But yeah, the cuddle one. Maybe he's just got lonely dreams. Lonely. Very he has vivid like- lonely dreams. What is that? Uh, sleep paralysis, but sexy. Yeah. <laughs> Wet dream? No. <laughs> no, sleep paralysis. You know what that is, right? Yeah, I know. But I mean, I don't know if there's a good one. And well, I just meant like usually the sleep paralysis experiences when they see anything in their room is very hostile. But this seems very gentle. It's all calming. It's just nice and cuddly. Oh, so back to the that club manager. He also goes on and comments and says that time and time again, he sees baseball players coming out of the rooms looking very sleepy in the morning like no one can ever really get a good night's sleep and that even other ball players when they get up super early in the morning like extra early before that anyone wants to check out and actually hang out at miller park for hours because they'd rather do that than spend another minute in the hotel that's rough and that one that's the one i think gets me because i actually really like hotels for some reason if it, as long yeah, as it's not like I a mean, dingy hotel, like as long as it's a nice hotel, there's something kind of nice about like, you know, the crunchy sheets and like the, the new crunchy bed. sheets, you know, because they've got like the starch, you know, so they feel like kind of stiff, oh. but in that really comfortable way. I, I don't mean like because they're covered in <laughs> stuff I'm not even going to mention, but no, no, I meant like, sheets. I think you meant crisp. I meant crisp, not crunchy, sorry. <laughs> You know me and my crisp crunch cereal. Uh, yes. Um, yeah. So crisp sheets. Snap, crackle, pop. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Um, I kind of like it. There's especially when it's got one of those wall units and it's got that hum from the air conditioner. I actually mm-hmm. can, and, and we don't have cable, so it's like the time I have cable. So <laughs> I actually really enjoy a hotel room. So if I was so scared, I was like, I'm just gonna go to work and not be in my hotel room. That's when you know it's bad. It's bad. I agree. Uh, ugh. This next one is Carlos Martinez and Marcel Osuna, and they played for the Cardinals, so mm-hmm. it's the both of them with this experience. Uh, back in 2018, both players were sharing a room when they suddenly saw a ghost. Both of them freaked out and decided to go to their other teammate's room, Francisco Peña, for safety, they said. Other teammates heard about what happened, including a few coaches, and went into Peña's room too. Martinez posted a video on his Instagram and said... He was, uh, this is what he said, quote, we are here in Milwaukee. I just saw a ghost in Osuna's room. He saw another one. We are all here. We're all in Benita's room. We are stuck here. We're going to sleep together. If the ghost shows up again, we're going to fight together. (laughs) End quote. (laughs) Uh, Weirdo. Uh, And then in the video, you can also see that the other players are hanging out in the room too. So it's just this funny video of like all these Grown men just like... But they're, it's adorable that they're all scared and they're yeah. just like, we're going to hang out together and fight it. And I'm like, you know what? That's exactly what I would do There too. is num- There is safety in numbers. I'm 100% I guess. totally in the same boat as them. Like, that's what I would do. Yeah. But it doesn't change that it isn't adorable to see what it's like. We're all just hanging out here together <laughs> to fight the ghosts. And we'll beat his ass <laughs> together. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, the last baseball player thing i'm going to talk about is from john gray he played for the colorados uh for, for colorado for the colorado for the colorados for the rockies yes that's what i was gonna say but whatever uh he is somewhat of a ghost hunter 
So whenever he goes to unknown haunted hotels, he always brings his little EMF reader. He's all about it. <laughs> He's so about it. And unfortunately, though, which is so weird, he has never experienced anything anywhere. Like, he's the one who's like, yeah, I'm going to catch me a ghost. And, like, nothing ever happens. It's a total conspiracy that the people who want to see it, the ghosts are like, no, not them. <laughs> we're, tr- we're trying to convert the non-believers. Maybe something Believers like that. Believers we leave alone. I have no idea. But, like, he's totally all about it. And poor dude never finds anything. But ever since then, like, all these baseball players, especially the ones who've obviously had bad experiences, usually end up staying in another hotel or... They bunk with a buddy. So that's kind of like their way of dealing with it. I bunk. <laughs> just, yeah, just hang out with your little friend. And also, like, there's rooms with two beds, so it's not like you have to share a bed or anything like that. It's fine, guys. <laughs> I'm not saying they're cuddling. <laughs> Maybe that's what happened to Choi. He's like, wait. <laughs> One of his other teammates just snuck in the middle of the night. It's like, I'm scared, bro. <laughs> He's like, okay. I'll leave in the morning, though. Yeah. He's like, it's just another ghost. Um, <laughs> I have one more story. There's so many stories out there. I kind of weeded out the ones that we I liked. have to stay at this hotel. I know. I really want to. I really want to. But we'll get to that. Uh, the last story I have is from Joy Lawrence. He is a celebrity. He was on Blossom. He was like the older brother. I think that's maybe one of his most famous roles. <laughs> <laughs> I never really watched it. I saw it every now and then when I was a kid when it came on. And But wasn't whatever. it already like... It was old by then. By, by then. So I don't know. Anyway. He was on a show that I watched called Celebrity Ghost Stories. You've seen me watch it a few times. Oh, yeah, that's that's a fun show. Yeah. And this is uh, season two, episode 17, if anyone is curious. He stayed at the Pfister Hotel back in 2006 when he was on the show Dancing with the Stars. Okay. So real quick, during the interview, they never, like on the show, Ghost Stories, uh, they never explicitly said that it was the Pfister Hotel. They only said it was an old Milwaukee hotel. But then the IMDb description said it was the Fister Hotel. Totally. So I don't know if they were trying to make it a secret or like couldn't say it on the show, but they said in the description. So here we go. He goes on to say that while he was touring, he and his family were with him, his wife at the time, and his, or his wife, I'm sure he's still married to her, and his six-month-old daughter. As soon as he entered their room, he and his wife commented how creepy it felt in there. Later that night, everyone had gone to bed, and a few of his daughter's toys turned on by themselves. Mm. Yeah. He described the toys and said that they were battery-powered and that they required physical interaction in order for them to turn on. So they're not, like, not with a sensor or... There's just really no way for them to turn on on their own. Uh, So one of the toys was a light-up keyboard, and another one was kind of like a ball light... They all make noises, right? Sure, sure. It's a kid's toy. And he said 30 minutes later, once everyone was falling asleep again, bam, the toys turn on again. Again. He got up and turned them off, but this time he picked them up and put them in the bathroom. Ooh. Yeah, he's like, mm-mm. So about an hour after, he's still lying in, in bed awake when all of a sudden he sees the bathroom light turn on. Fuck no. Mm-hmm. All right, now we're getting out of the out of the fun, humorous baseball player <laughs> stories. This one's messed up. This one's so messed up. He shoots up and checks to make sure that no one was in the room because that's a that's different. Of course. I think. So he checks, no one's there, and as soon as he turns off the light, the damn toys turn back on. That's, that's creepy. That yeah. would creep me out. Fears. For the rest of the night, he couldn't sleep. When it was finally morning, he got ready and headed off to the lobby. He spoke to the front desk manager and told them what happened, and the manager was like, oh, you must not know the hotel's history. The manager goes on to explain that when the hotel was first built, a bride was murdered by her husband on the night of their wedding by being thrown down the elevator shaft. Man, that is a weird wedding tradition. It's a... <laughs> Why do these brides keep dying, damn it? <laughs> Um, It was later revealed that she was pregnant. This is why she bothers guests with small children. Oh. So do you think he killed her for maybe she was allegedly unfaithful or something? Allegedly. I think on the show he mentioned something. But this is also like hearsay, so I don't know the real details. But I guess it was kind of like a forced marriage. He didn't want to marry her. Oh. And I guess he wanted to get rid of her. Yeah. What a dick. Yes. Just to put it lightly. 
Uh, after hearing this, Lawrence is a little freaked out, but manages to still go upstairs and grab the last bags before they leave. As he's walking out, he says out loud, goodbye, ghosts. And as soon as he finished saying those words, the panel vents that were attached to the air conditioning on the opposite side of the wall come flying towards him violently. No way. He's like, I, he left immediately after that. Like it hit, it hit him kind of, but he was at the doorway. So it didn't really hit him that hard. Yeah. You were pissed off. He was provoking him though. He was like, he even, he even said it during the interview. He was kind of being like, goodbye ghost. Like you didn't get me or something like that. I'm like, why would you do that? (laughs) Especially after something that you know, experienced like Mm -hmm. real experiences. Yeah. Why would you talk like that? If you believe it? I don't know. So rude. I throw a panel at him too. Just kidding. So I checked the prices at the hotel and I saw that if we were going to book something tonight, it was going to be $800. What? But that's because of short availability notice. When I checked what it would be like in two months, it was more around $233. Still pretty expensive. Very expensive. But again, it would have been in December when I checked the prices. So maybe that we'd have to find an off season thing. Absolutely. Which I don't know when that would be. So anyway, if we want to ever stay there, we're going to have to make it like a big thing, obviously, because make it an event. it's a bit pricey for sure, especially for us. I mean, you still want to do it, though. That's pretty exciting. <laughs> I know we'd have to talk about baseball. We were there. See if it, it inspired the ghosts. You know, we just put baseball on TV or put something on YouTube. Yeah. Make sure we put a, a game on that's got like teams that are known for being like like rivals on. yeah or, or or that like we know players in there have gotten some oh yeah. Ooh. i really want to stay there milwaukee's got some good hotels so yeah man that's exciting there were some like trip advisor i did see some stories but again they tend to be pretty not mild but i thought it was more interesting to actually put like athletes and celebrity stories on no here. names N- like no names and i'm not saying because like oh they tell the truth or anything but they do. They might have something to lose a little bit they more. They do. There's a little you know? bit of, and there's no anonymity. You know, these exactly. are. This is. We know who they are. We can look them up. Yeah, this is their. Um, yeah, reputation. Reputation. That's the <laughs> word I'm looking for. I kept thinking like profile. I'm like, no, no, that's not the right word. Yeah, this is their reputation on the line. Yeah. Like, you don't want to go around saying like I'm haunted at all my hotels. Like that's not good. But sports players in general tend to be on the superstitious side. That is very so true. So we should be fair when we consider that if anyone is is more likely to see something, whether or not it's there, could be there, could not be. Sure. I would definitely believe athletes would do it. Yeah. Yep. Nothing wrong with being superstitious. No, it's I just totally the way they agree. Are. I, I know they're very superstitious. I mean, even their fans are superstitious. Absolutely. This is not a specific baseball thing, obviously, but you know. Whole competition thing going on. The whole on. thing, you know. So a night at the fiesta. I think that sounds like a lot of fun. I think so, too. I really want to do it. So I will admit, while you're researching, I had no idea what you were researching. At one point, I turned over and I saw the Milwaukee Brewers logo, and I was like, why is she looking at baseball stuff? <laughs> yeah, I had Because you and me like baseball, but we're not, like, fanatics. Pretty much, if it's and not like, either of our two teams <laughs> playing, we're not really paying much attention. Yeah. And I was like, what's up with the Brewers on your screen? Just, and I was like... Just checking the stats. And I thought to myself, well, it has to be related to the story, but I had no idea. I didn't know it had to do with haunted baseball players. Oh, yes. Well... Haunted experiences. From baseball players. Yes. <laughs> yeah, not like baseball players who are eternally haunted as they right. move around. They seem to be doing fine. But that was awesome. That was a great story. I really like that. You're welcome. I, I remember Alex talking about this a while ago, and I put and I wrote it down. I have a list of things that I'm like, oh, someone mentioned this. I should you know do it at some point. And she had actually stayed there. Oh, really? Yeah, when she was, uh, I think she said 13, something like that. But she didn't experience anything bad. But she had heard a lot of the stories. And since she had lived there before, she already knew that it was haunted. And she had mentioned it to me. So I just, I was like, yeah, I think it's time for me to do it. Especially since recently her and Tom had gone to Wisconsin uh, for a thing. And I'm like, oh, I feel like it's in this. It's it's, it's lined. It's aligned. I'm doing it. Good timing. It's a good timing thing. Yeah. Well, hopefully we get to Wisconsin sometime soon and we will stay there. Oh, hell yeah. We're so going to Milwaukee again. Just in general. I just want to go back to Milwaukee. It's so fun. But yeah, so we are reaching, actually, holy cow, my story was really long. Sorry about that. So we should totally take a quick break. My yeah. beer's been gone for like half that story because I was <laughs> super involved. So like every time Toby Storm, like take sip, 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 sip. So I need another beer. I got a short but sweet story for you Hell right yeah. after we come back. So we'll see you guys in a few seconds. All right, 
Welcome back, guys. So it's time for me to tell you a little story. Uh, no baseball on this one, though. <laughs> so a few days ago, if you aren't aware, summer officially ended. September 22nd marks the first day of fall. Yay! But I figured the best way to say bye to summer is to get one more island horror story out. So today I have another haunting tale from New Zealand. And yes, the humor isn't lost on me that I'm celebrating the end of summer with a tale from New Zealand who is just starting spring because they're in the Southern Hemisphere. (laughs) But it's still an island and you think of beaches and all that stuff and it feels warm, even though it may not be. Just pretend. Just pretend. Today's story is a bit weird. It's a mix of horror, possibly a little true crime, definitely a lot of tragedy. But in general, I consider it pretty creepy and it needed to be told. All right, I'm so down. This is a story of a Makutu lifting gone wrong. This all took place in October of 2007 in Wainuiomata, a region near Wellington, the capital of New Zealand. Janet Moses was a 22-year-old woman and mother from a Maori family. For those of you that don't know or haven't heard about them in my previous episodes on New Zealand, the Maori are the indigenous people of New Zealand. So back to Janet Moses, she had been having a really rough time recently in her life. Apart from the stresses of having to raise two children, their father, also her boyfriend, had recently cheated on her. Mm. And even more pressing was that she had lost her grandmother very recently. Her increasingly erratic behavior began to alarm her family. They were worried something abnormal was wrong with her. Elements of her behavior were described as becoming psychotic. (gasps) Whoa. So they decided to consult a Maori elder or Kaumatua for advice. By the way, my pronunciation is maybe bad on those. I'm doing my best. (laughs) See, it turns out that some of Janet's family members had stolen a stone lion from a nearby Greytown hotel. It is assumed that the reason for this theft is that the family's symbolic emblem was a lion. Hmm. And around the time of the theft is exactly when Janet's behavior began to deteriorate. Oh. The oh Maori. My- yeah, yeah, no, exactly. So oh, they're like, I'm we like, stole uh, something. Now she's acting all weird. Yeah. As someone who always overthinks things, I'm the kind of guy who's like, hmm, interesting. Yeah. The Maori elder recommended that they return the lion statue because the statue had brought evil into the home. You know, karma is another word for it, but don't steal shit. I'm just saying, just don't steal stuff. It's not going to go well for you. He then prayed and blessed her. The family did return the statue, and Janet's condition initially improved somewhat. Oh, well, now we know. But unfortunately, not long after, it became considerably worse. Oh, never mind. Details are limited, but at some point, the family became convinced that Janet was suffering the effects of makutu, which is essentially the Maori word for witchcraft. They Mm. thought she was either cursed or possessed or under some similar form of evil. Because of this, the family decided that she needed to undergo a makutu lifting, which is essentially an exorcism in Maori culture. Now, the family refused to take Janet to a hospital and refused to let any people from outside the family into the home as they prepared for the ritual. The ritual itself is actually horrifying. And it should also be noted that from what sources I read, the family was not trained or very familiar with the proper methods of doing a lifting procedure. Oh, so they were performing it themselves. Yes. I just realized. No, no elders or experienced anyone's. (gasps) That is like... It's sketchy as hell. The biggest no, especially like in exorcism and even... Exactly. Just our basic knowledge on that kind of thing. But this is also where we need to have a little disclaimer while I'm telling the story. Uh Uh-oh. It should also be noted that many prominent, respected Maori community members have denounced this as not representative of the proper procedure or even of general Maori beliefs or culture. that's pretty reasonable considering that they're not experienced or yeah no exactly but it seemed like they went way off and just so, in case okay I see and so saying, as the yeah. declaimer what happened in this story happened in a specific home with a single family and they're the acts of that single family mm. and these are not representative of a people or a culture okay. so even though i you know was talking about maori and everything and that there's some maori rituals and the words that they use to like describe certain rituals what's about to happen is denounced by many respected maori people as not representative. so now we're like 
it's a them it's thing. It's a them thing. What it's they not. thought was... It's this weird family. Okay. Gotcha. 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 So the ritual itself involved relatives throwing bowls of water onto Janet in an effort to kill the spirit. Now, that might seem tame and weird on its own, but trust me, the sheer amount of water they were throwing on her is staggering. The room became so flooded and soaked that they had to create a hole in the floor just to drain the water out. What? Yeah. They continued to toss absurd amounts of water onto Janet. How were they getting water so quickly? I think it's because they had the whole family and there was kind of like a chain gang style oh. where they're like oh. handing the bowls. So they were just constantly Shit. coming water, 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 mm-hmm. water. They continued to toss absurd amounts of water onto Janet, who was being held down by other family members. Her head was also being held in one position, despite Janet coughing and gagging and trying to turn away from the water. She allegedly pleaded with them to stop, but the family members were convinced it was the demon talking. No. During this process, several family members allegedly put their mouths over Janet's eyes and attempted to suck out the evil. What the f- Yeah, fuck? this is disgusting. This is so... They were sucking on her eyeballs, um, which I you just, I got to you one of those painful things Just close ever. my eyes. I can't even... Bleh. You can feel the pressure. Oh my god. It's gosh. awful. <laughs> I can barely handle this. Uh-huh. It's so fucked so up. So I don't understand this. I don't understand this at all, but it might be one of the most bizarre things I've ever heard in my life, you know, but it happened to her. She, I, I can't even imagine the it. logic behind that, but okay. So they claim they were trying to remove the evil that was stuck in her eyes. So like see the demons in her eyes. Oh, I see now. With their mouths. <laughs> sure. You know, because that's Cause the way to do it. They'll like suck it into them. Yeah, or maybe they can digest it. I don't know. There's some there's some craziness going on. Okay. Here. All right. Well. Yeah. So this agony would continue uninterrupted for days. <gasps> yeah. Oh, shit. So, like, did they have, like, rotating families? No, like, just... they weren't rotating. The family was so committed that even they would not leave to use the restroom, choosing to either soil themselves oh, or somewhere in the room. Oh, my fucking God. I'm not making this up. This is what I'm reading. The, if, if what I read was made up, maybe, but this is what I was this reading. This is the most disgusting story you've read yet. It's pretty terrible, right? Disgusting. Not the scariest. Still, the abduction one freaks me out. But this is... You're right. This is true crimey scary. It's going to get one step worse. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. One other girl in the room, a teenager, began to suffer from some of the effects of these conditions we're talking about, which led the family to believe that she, too, was possessed. You mean trauma? I'd be yeah. traumatized, too, watching this. She was grabbed and placed near Janet. Oh, no. And was then also subjected to the overload of water being applied to their faces. At one point, family members forced Janet's mouth open, allowing the tides of water to get into her lungs. Janet drowned uh, while, yeah. while lying in a bed. She died. Fuck. Where you and me would assume the family would have a reality check and stop, they didn't. And they just continued with the water on the still living teenage girl next to her. They just assumed like they failed with Janet or... Don't know. I don't know what their thought process was. Maybe they're thinking Janet would come too because of the demon was still there i have no idea okay well they're obviously just not okay no we're good okay go on so she wasn't as resilient as janet and soon blacked out thankfully and we finally are going to the light now okay by this point one family member probably decided something's wrong here and left and went to the to get a community elder and bring the matter to their attention now you do The elder came to the house. He stopped the ritual and advised them to take the still living teenage girl to the hospital immediately, which they did. Yeah. She thankfully survived. It would be nine hours after Janet's death before authorities were contacted about the incident. Whoa. So nine hours. Janet died until cops were told. Okay, but like, did the elder not want to tell them either? No, I think this happened before that. I think this was like during this whole thing. And then they're like, you have to tell the authorities as a dead... I see. A dead girl in your room from a botched exorcism. Okay. This was a massive investigation, and it took new sites by storm. Apparently, this hit all over the world, but particularly strong in like New Zealand and whatnot. Mm-hmm. 
Many people both in and out of New Zealand were unaware of these lifting practices. I hadn't heard of it until I did this story. Well, yeah, me either. It brought a lot of attention to the Maori people and their cultural practices. Most of it negative, most of it unfounded, and most of it unwarranted Again, because it was a crazy family, I was gonna not say, Maori people. How do you... Of course I've never heard of it. They fucking made it up. But you know how news is. They like yeah. to hook onto something and it's, well, it's always been news. It's rude, but yeah. Um... Like I said, there was a small unlimited group of people performing something they had no business or understanding of. So there was a high profile trial that followed and none of the family members were sentenced to prison. However, they were all found guilty. Oh, okay. Or at least so, like I think five of them were found guilty. And they had a mix of punishments, including uh, years of community service, uh, years of being monitored by mm-hmm. people kind of wasn't house arrest, but they had limitations. I think you'd kind of consider it like extreme probation here. I was going to say like a probation thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and I saw, I saw the family members that were on trial and everything and Jeez. the media, the, like the judge essentially said that a lot of people are having a hard time believing that people still do this kind of thing these days. But he also acknowledged that these people seem to fervently believe in it. So it was kind of like, are we punishing them for something they truly believed even if uh, even if we think it's wrong and he was struggling. You know, law works differently in different countries, and I'm not going to say I... And also... As an American, I should never tell other people how to do their justice system because ours is under criticism from so many other people as well. It's... Constantly. It's but not like, our place to say other just, people what they should do. I mean, not just that, but, like, even in our system, we don't have meth... Or what is it, like, laws against these kind of things all the time either. Absolutely. You kind of go with what you got, and then until a judge rules it, and then it becomes law. I mean, that's how laws are created, right? But, like, I guess my point was that really reminds me of a story that we've had here that I'm going to cover eventually. I think you might know it. It's the exorcism of Emily Rose. Yeah. That's not her real name in the actual real life sure. story. But that's the movie that it was based on. And I want you to give me the full on story, not the movie version. Right. But I do think one of the things that's interesting about the story, and and one, it's absolutely horrible that this woman died and that's sad. And I usually, most of my yeah. horror stories usually don't have that kind of stuff. So I apologize. But it was scary. When I read this, I it was scared. It is scary. Yeah. But, it's, uh, it's, it's awful. It's one of these things where you... This was an exorcism story told from the perspective of the exorcism went wrong. And the question is whether or not an exorcism even needed to be performed. And it makes you realize when you look at a movie that we see, when we see exorcisms in movies, the person is obviously possessed because they're yeah. showing us the story that they're possessed. But when we're talking about something in real life, can we say whether or not they're possessed? Because if you don't believe in that and you don't. Absolutely, you'd be like, they're not possessed, so what you're doing to them is a form of torture, and this is awful, which I assume is kind of the basis in the Emily Rose story. Yeah, so it that one, I, I think the movie did pretty good. I, I've read, okay, so I haven't researched it in depth, obviously, but I have heard the real story. I think I remember reading about it like many, many years ago when the movie came out, just to get some sort of like perspective of what was going on, and it does seem like there was something to it, but also... You'll you'll figure it. You'll find out once I tell you about it. But I will admit, uh, as as someone who's seen so many exorcism movies and mm-hmm. stuff, Western style, I had never even heard of a Maori style exorcism, and this obviously wasn't actually a Maori. So we style. still haven't heard. <laughs> but what what it meant was, I now heard of a attempted exorcism that had some of the most bizarre stuff I've ever seen. It was like yeah. trying to essentially drown someone and suck on their eyeballs. They're mostly pretty freaking weird. weird. Uh, I think, like, it's, at least in the Catholic Church, whenever they're like, you have to be blessed, or not blessed, uh, give permission from the Catholic Church in order to give an exorcism, usually that requires certain, like, practices. But, like, honestly, what you're really doing is just reading from a Bible, mm-hmm. and uh, you have to stop their medication and things like that. So if you're if you're thinking, oh, maybe they're just having seizures, they need their medication or they're like psychotic so they need their um those kind of drugs or whatever whatever they may be on that the doctors recommended they need to be off so that could be a huge risk especially if they're epileptic because then they can have a really bad seizure and die so those are the kind of risks that you run whenever you're doing uh like those kind of exorcism though though that's just kind of what i've read in the past i mean no, I, absolutely i'll get into that at some other point but yeah well and on one of my previous stories where some people were on a hike and they stepped over a tiki totem and he thought he had a bad spirit attached oh, to him. yeah the way they approached that seemed a lot more spiritual and about cleansing and everything and it seemed much more 
peaceful but serious and this one seems so uncharacteristically violent yeah that i am curious to know what an actual maori lifting a real one is like not this essentially what i as far as i can tell was a torture like, on yeah an uneducated bastardization of a procedure they that probably they heard do. oh you know maybe spray some water in their face and they're like oh well if you get buckets of it it's yeah, better unending <laughs> water or something i have no idea i i just i can't even imagine what they're thinking but yeah but yeah so um exorcisms sound terrible doesn't matter uh what cultural beliefs you are they don't they don't sound fun no not at all but anyway, that is my story, my island story to finish off the summer and bring in the fall. Yay! I'm going to have more fall stories. Well, especially since it's going to be October by the time we do our next episode, I believe. Next episode will come out in October. Yeah, I have some pretty good ones lined up. I already think I already have a list. Oh, which by the way reminds me. So I'm now going to request from you guys to not just send recommendations like we've said in the past, but also if you guys have a personal story, because I think it'd be really fun to add some at the end of either some of the episodes or even if I get enough, create a whole entire episode on personal stories from our listeners. Yeah, I just thought maybe it was fun for Halloween. You know, if you guys have any bonus points, if it's a Halloween or long as possible, doesn't matter. It can be short, it can be long. Especially if the Halloween episode themed horror story, like something weird happened to you during Halloween, who knows? We would love to hear it. That would be on our Gmail account if you want to send us a story that way. It's hotwpodcast at gmail.com. Also, you can send it through our social media. You can like message us that way. And yes, take it away, Chase. I'm terrible at this. So just remember, we post uh, new episodes every single Saturday. You can find us on all major podcasting platforms. And if for some reason we're missing on one, you let us know and we'll try to fix that. Thank you guys for joining us today for our two stories. Mine a little bit depressing, which I apologize for. We're going to keep drinking, and we hope you do too. Unless you haven't been drinking, we hope the next time you're allowed to responsibly, you can get your drinks on and enjoy us. And... If you're listening to us because you drank too much the night before and you're super hungover, (laughs) don't worry because the best cure for a hangover is fear. Bye. See ya.